What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the IGN All-Star Community Podcast. This is episode four of the podcast. I'm one of your hosts, the epic Jake James Lugo. And with me, I got my compatriot, Mr. Peter Lopez. Peter, my man, how you been, dude? Good, good. Guten tag, everybody. Guten tag, man. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank Hanukkah, you. Happy Kwanzaa, all that Kwanzaa. good stuff. All that good stuff. All the presents. <laughs> That's what it is, man. But yeah, seriously, you know, this is right after Christmas. You know, this is the recording on the 27th, so it's been two days for, of Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Or technically one, but like an extra day and such. But how was your Christmas, man? Like, did you get anything good for Christmas? Get some good gifts? Mine was good. Mine was pretty cool, man. I mean, I, I got Captain Toad. Um, nice. Treasure Tracker for Wii U, which I'm pretty stoked and planning on reviewing that. And then I also got, uh, well, this was an early gift, but my Snowball microphone that I'm using right now. I got nice. that uh, about a three weeks ago or so four weeks ago <laughs> yeah and it couldn't have come at a better time right absolutely so yeah my, my christmas was good man how was yours uh it was pretty sweet i mean again i also had a nintendo christmas this is nice. this is a common theme of this year because we'll get into it a little bit later but like a lot of a lot of good nintendo stuff i got a wii u finally mm-hmm. again sweet so i picked it up with the was it i picked up the bundle with super mario 3d world and nintendo land nice. so i have those and i got the 32 gigabyte system along with uh, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, which is, like, mandatory if you own a Wii U at this point, yeah. which is great. <laughs> but also, I was able to not only kind of, like, you know, connect my Nintendo Network ID, so I got, you know, most of my downloads back. So I have a bunch of good games to play on my Wii U at the moment, which is very, very cool. But in addition to that, I also got a copy of Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix, Sweet. which I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. So PS3, right? For PlayStation 3, yeah, it's not on Wii U, unfortunately. You know, <laughs> there's been rumors. There's been rumors for some time. You know, ever since 2.5 came out, that there might be a collection for the Wii U involving a was it Dream Drop Distance, Whoa. like a like a HD re-release of that. You know, because that game was originally on 3DS. But I wouldn't be surprised. But again, that's hearsay at this point. Yeah. But I got that game. I've been playing all of them for a while. The only one I haven't really dived into too much is Super Mario 3D World. Because, again, I've been playing so much Smash Brothers, trying to unlock the characters, trying to go online and stuff. It's been, it's been awesome. Addicted, exactly. Like, <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Like, I played enough online on my 3DS, and, like, you know, it just feels right at home jumping into the Wii U. But mm-hmm. being able to do some of the different capabilities of the Wii U version, you know, including connecting my 3DS to it to use it as a controller for multiplayer. I finally did 8-man Smash for, like, the first time with just, like, one other person and, like, eight, uh, a bunch of computer players. What'd you think and of that? Like, I mean, going from, you know, the <laughs> standard four-player, eight eight people now, what's your opinion on that? To be honest, it gets very hectic. I think it's more fun with more people, mm-hmm. obviously. You know, that's that's the party mode when you've got friends over and you just want to, and everybody's got three yeses or you've got multiple controllers. That's the mode you put on for everybody and you will not stop playing. Mm-hmm. But... Playing with just, like, a couple people, computer-controlled opponents, I mean, that's good, especially if you have an amiibo that allows you to kind of, like, level them up a little bit much more easier uh-huh. the more that you do. But, you know, one of the only issues I can really say about that is that sometimes because the maps are so big and because there's so much craziness on screen, it's a little hard to keep track of what's going on with your character because you got such, like, a small speck on the screen with a little icon to show where you're at. That's why it kind of helps to put, like, a little label, like, you know, a little, kind of like, icon instead of having just player one, player two and such. But it's still fun regardless. I think that, again, that's the party mode. Mm-hmm. That's not really the mode you're going to want to play solo unless you just want to, like, hardcore, like, hyperbolic time chamber training for that competitive Smash Brothers, like, you know, stuff. Yeah, I don't Wait. know. It, it, seem, it seems fun, like, but after playing it once, like, I couldn't do it anymore. It just, it just seems like it's too much, but that's just my opinion. I, I agree. I mean, solo, it's too much. <laughs> I think that again, you you need other people to play that mode to get the most out of it. That's that's the party mode. That mm-hmm. that's the best way to put it. But everything else though is pretty sweet. Like I've been doing the event matches. I've been unlocking characters. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a little pissed because I tried doing the the crazy orders because in order to get Rob, besides doing like the different number of matches, you have to go through ten crazy orders before you fight the crazy hand. Mm-hmm. It's like these little like mission stuff that what you do, mm-hmm. and you have to do ten in a row in order to unlock him and beat the crazy hand at the same time. It's just like, it gets annoying because right at the very cusp of it, like when I get that nine, almost the 10th win, something really stupid will happen and I'll have to do it all over again. That's so annoying. So are you like more of the casual smash player or are you more of the competitive online person? Uh, I would say I'm a little more casual because I get more enjoyment out of Mm. playing the game casually with Mm. either other people here locally or just doing the single player content stuff. Mm-hmm. But like I've been slowly starting to get much more online. I think like the, the level of skill difference, the gap is huge 
mm-hmm. because there's a lot of really good people online that just destroy me. Mm-hmm. Like, I got my butt kicked by a sheep player, what was it, the other day when I was online. I was just like, the plea just got destroyed for like no apparent reason. <laughs> it's just like, you know, good luck trying to learn the game on that, on that regard. But it was still fun regardless. But I, I would lean much more to casual for myself. Right on. Yeah, I mean, it's two different worlds. I mean, like you were saying, if you got a bunch of buddies and you're just playing casually with, like, items and stuff, you know, you'll have a good time. But once you jump into that online multiplayer world, it's completely different. Night and day. A um, lot of competitive people. A lot of crazy character oh, yeah. usages, usages or, or whatever. Um, Definitely. Yeah, like, it's insane. Like, the Sheik players are crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're they're pretty fast. Like, that. I think the, the thing with this game is, is speed. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff you could do in the game with all the characters, but I think a lot of the really good uh, players are going to gravitate towards characters that have a lot of speed. I mean, they, you got those Cat Ganondorf and those Captain Falcon players. Yeah. You know, Captain Falcon's kind of fast, but, like, mm-hmm. that's the big thing. Is it's going to be speed. But speaking of Nintendo, right, you know, Christmas was an interesting time. Like I said, it, it's a very Nintendo-esque Christmas because I think that, you know, Nintendo... Great lineup of games for people for the holidays, which is awesome. That's one. But also, because of all this stuff with the online services getting, you know, DDoS attacked and all kind of like messed around, a lot of fails all over the place. But one one thing that I found was funny is that nobody messed with Nintendo. Like, right. everybody was able to get there at their consoles that if you got like a Wii U or 3DS and such, you were able to go online and play your games without a problem. But... PlayStation Network and Xbox Live had a lot of issues with this group called Lizard Squad, Mm -hmm. which, you know, I guess some sort of organized hacker group or whatnot ended up doing DDoS attacks Mm -hmm. on PlayStation Network and Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. And at the current moment of this recording, PlayStation Network is still having a ton of problems, and Xbox Live is back up to full capacity. I mean... It's pretty nuts. I feel bad for all the people that got games, you know, this Christmas. Yeah, like they can't even play it. I know, um, I believe it was last year, uh, Nintendo got just an over... They were overwhelmed with the online connectivity, and that shut them down. But this year, like you were saying, nobody touched Nintendo, and that's freaking awesome. I feel bad, really bad for the people who got new PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones, and they have to redeem, you know, code vouchers, but they can't because they can't even connect to... Can't even connect to the internet. Can't get that patch. That day one patch is, is gone. And it sucks too because, you know, unlike Nintendo games where it's a lot of, mostly, I think it's safe to assume like most Nintendo games that are now on the Wii U and such, mm-hmm. they're more oriented towards on, offline play, not yeah. so much online. But also, a lot of Nintendo games, you won't really get that day one patch per se. You know, I think there were, I, I'm not sure if there was a day one patch for Smash Brothers on Wii U. Uh, but like was. almost, I think almost mm-hmm. every other game, you know, that's on like PlayStation Network or again, or uh, Xbox Live or such or mm-hmm. any one of those consoles, there's some sort of day one patch that you have to get. And like because if there's a new patch out, you won't be able to play the game unless you connect to the internet and just download it, which really sucks, especially in times like this because. You know, a lot of new games, like, you know, people that were picking up Master Chief Collection or picking up Sunset Overdrive or, uh, you know, anything. Killzone Shadowfall, even though it's a little bit older. You know, any any one of these games that probably came out during this holiday season, it, you know, you have to deal with that. And it, just, it was just, like, the worst timing for them. Yeah, dude, that sucks. I feel real bad for those people because they just basically got a system. That was it, you know. It's, and it just sat there. Yeah, it's the best gift in the world, I mean, to them, because they got a system for Christmas, but they can't use it. And it's like, well, I guess I'll just mess with my toys or whatever else they got, you know. Yeah, I mean, do you think, like, maybe, you know, <clears throat> PlayStation, I mean, Sony or Microsoft, and maybe even Nintendo, do, do you think maybe they have to handle things like this a little bit better or have much more of a better contingency plan? I think they definitely need to prepare for the future, um, just like their regular game launches uh, with Mass Chief Collection and that catastrophe. Um, <laughs> I think they could have prepped for that better. Um, and just with their servers, I'm sure they have like dedicated teams, obviously, who work on these kind of things. But um, maybe they can just enlist these guys to, you know, prevent <laughs> Pull the everything. FBI. Yeah, you know, I mean, why not? If you can't beat them, get them to join. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because this is just nonsense. And I mean, it's reality. It's unfortunate reality that it happened. I, but Honestly, know. I think it's very tough. Because again, these things, you know, there's no way to really kind of like tell when something like this is going to happen. Yeah. Let alone on Christmas of all times. Like, again, like I'm pretty sure a lot of gamers are really pissed off having to deal with something like that. But, like, you know, maybe, like, having a sort of, like, a backup or maybe, again, I, we were talking about it before recording the podcast. Like, what is it that, like, guys like Sony could actually do to kind of, like, make up for stuff like this that just happened? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, maybe some people feel like they're not doing a bit good enough job 
I mean, there you you were even telling me about some talk about maybe Sony either giving away some free time trials for PlayStation Plus or games or something. You know, what do you think? Right. Yeah, I think they need there needs to be compensation just because of you know they're bursting the bubbles of all the people who got new systems um, and they can't play them. So, you know, like you were just saying, PlayStation might give out free, um, you know, music subscriptions for like a month or PSN (laughs) subscriptions um, a month. And this information isn't necessarily concrete. It's just stuff that's been floating around on the internet. It's hearsay. Yeah. And PlayStation has done that before. Like when there was that huge outage for God knows how long with the PSN they gave. But you know something that was a big, that was a big, like conglomerate size, you know, San Andreas size issue like this is just like for a day like to me I don't feel like they necessarily have to do it I like knowing Sony you know because again they're still down at the time that we're recording this maybe they'll give everybody like what like a week to a month of free PlayStation Plus like something like that I mean it's it's Christmas I mean this isn't like you know a normal a normal day this is like a big day you know and that ruins somebody's Christmas that they couldn't play their PlayStation or their Xbox. So yeah, I mean, I think they need to be compensated. Give them some free games, you know. And it, like I said, it burst their bubble for that. Do day. you think that Microsoft necessarily needs to do it? Because they're fine. They're back up um, to full capacity. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's I don't know. I, I think these things. It's happen. murky. Yeah, it, it, it's uncontrollable, obviously. But um, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I want I want, I want compensation. <laughs> I want. <to> be- <laughs> we all want compensation. I'll take that free PlayStation Plus. <laughs> I go download myself some uh, Injustice Gods Among Us yeah. for PlayStation Four. I want free that sounds stuff. pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. No, but even so, like I think to me realistically, I, I really think like for Sony, they would just give like free PlayStation Plus. I don't I don't yeah. know necessarily they'd give away like a free game though, but you still get free games with PlayStation Plus. Sure. That's cool. And and that can be a really good marketing thing. It's like hey, you know, sorry for the shortage. Here's a free PlayStation. Um, plus check out all the the games on playstation plus right now and then that might even get people to resubscribe because i believe you need a credit card just to kind of activate a yes. trial so they're gonna get money no matter what because some people are gonna forget to deactivate that you know and true i think oh I, I don't know if necessarily you need a card when you buy like that little prepaid card no, not from the prepaid GameStop. cards but when you get a trial um oh, okay have yeah to have like a, an active credit card or debit card to just to redeem it you're not even true. charged, but you need it still. True, true. Very, very, very true. But, you know, besides all the bad online connection <laughs> services, those errors, and Nintendo online actually working and stuff, Peter, it's about that time. It's about for, that time. About that time for the IGN Community Spotlight. So who's this week's Community Spotlight? Sure, sure. Let me um, go ahead and pull it up since I am always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're always okay. This is pro god beast mode. This, we're we're gonna blame this on PlayStation Network and Xbox sure. Live right about now. We're getting DDoSed over here. <laughs> so the community spotlight goes to uh, smaller than galaxies, and you can go ahead and catch him on the um, on the PSN. And his uh, PSN is Omega Heartbeat. Um, but basically, his um, his blog was about his first impressions on Smash Wii U. Now, yeah, my man Jake James <laughs> over here just got his Wii U, or you know, got another one. He just got Smash, and um, I think I want to hear a little bit about what uh, JJ has to say about Smash because this guy, you know, obviously <laughs> he, this this smaller than Galaxy guy obviously loves it. Everybody loves yeah. it. But what do you think about it, though? Okay, well, besides all the stuff that we pretty much said before about Smash, you know, I, I guess, I, you know, what can be said is that this is the best in the series, hands down. Mm-hmm. It's the most meaty, you know, pretty much smaller than Galaxies. This Galaxy got a lot more larger by playing this game, just from the very get-go. But, you know, the game just has, again, a huge roster of characters, which is awesome. A lot of diverse uh, groups of characters to play with. Tons of modes, tons of controller options, up to eight players Smash. That's unheard of, you know, for a lot of different games, and it's amazing. Uh, a lot of different modes of like how to smash it up, not just you know traditional stock and time limit. Very very cool. The events are great. You know, and there's no really type of story mode, kind of like in Brawl, like the subspace emissary, but like they handle it in different ways. You have Smash Tour, which is like it's kind of like the Mario Party style version of this wow. game, it, and it's kind of blood. It, if anything, that's the worst aspect of it. But even then, like that that mode is still meaty enough that it's not like you know a huge detriment to the whole package i think this this is a nintendo fans game or just like a celebration of everything that's nintendo and they got yeah. it done right so yeah. and plus you can connect to the 3ds and you got custom characters custom me fighters i mean 
this is what, everything that you wanted and that you didn't know that you wanted. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really, it's that good of a game. It's a must on a Wii U. And that's pretty much what Smaller Than Galaxies was getting at. So in case you guys <laughs> want to go ahead and uh, send him a little love on my IGN, you can do that at Smaller Galaxies and also the PlayStation Network, Omega Heart Beat. And mm-hmm. he also has a Twitter account, too. So say hi to him on Twitter. It's jjordan96. Yeah, nice. Leave him a nice comment. Tell him, hey, listen, uh, let's settle in and smash. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's get it over with online. <laughs> Such, but yeah, the game game is just so good. It's cool. so, I like so good. It. I mean, I like it a lot more <laughs> than the uh, the 3ds uh, the 3ds version. Just oh yeah, hands down. It's obviously in you know high definition. It's got a wider screen, you know, which is your television. And, and honestly, you know, I think the online capabilities are more stable on Wii U. They are, yeah. I, I haven't ran into any problems with Wii U. The the control feels a lot better too. And I'm using the uh, the gamepad just like you are. I haven't had yeah. a chance to find the GameCube controller or anything like that. But it just feels good luck. <laughs> yeah, it feels just so much better just with the the gamepad. Um, oh. I mean, I'll, my opinion will differ when I get a GameCube controller, but for right of now, I think, it, I think it feels good. It's a nice video game. I like it. it like like you were saying, it's a it's a great homage to Nintendo and all of their all of the Nintendo fans, and it's got everything, every, all the cool characters in there. It's got everything in it. I miss Pokemon Trainer though from Brawl, but yeah, you but can, you got Charizard, you, know, you got you Greninja, as, as them individually. So I guess that's fine. And, and keep in mind, Pokemon fans, if you own both versions of the game now at this point, and you registered them on Club Nintendo, not only are you going to get an audio. Scene, CD that has a couple of the tracks from the game mailed to your house, but you're going to get the free download code to get download Mewtwo for 3DS yeah. and Wii U, That's which right. is a big deal mm-hmm. for a lot of people. He's coming out in the spring. You know, more likely by March, April, I'm guessing. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about Mewtwo, but I know people who have both copies of Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS will actually receive the uh, the soundtrack in March of 2015. So, yeah. you know, it's a few months away, and it's a little bit of a wait, but it's still coming, and it's still free, so that's awesome. Definitely. Pretty awesome. But before we kind of dive into some listener mail, we got more listener mail, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But a little bit of cleanup that we got to address here. You know, we're still doing our Tomb Raider figurine (laughs) giveaway. You know, keep sending your guys questions in. reason why we're going to extend it another extra week, you know, just to give everybody, again, a little more of a chance to try to win in so we can get more questions. Keep Mm -hmm. sending us your questions to allstarpod at Mm hotmail.com or shoot us over a comment in the MyIGN blogs when we post up the podcast or... You can shoot it over to us on Twitter at All Star Pod on Twitter at Venomous Batman One for me, and then Peter. Which what's your Twitter again? It's uh, Pete underscore Lopez, and Lopez has a zero in it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody trying to call my phone. It's like no, we're podcasting. This is this is important business, stuff. Darn it, we're taking care of business. We're selling it in Smash. <laughs> I swear to God, if we ever go to a convention one time, we run into the announcer guy for Smash Bros. I swear to God, we're gonna have to get him to do like an intro or something because oh, he's got the most coolest voice awesome. to make anything sound awesome yeah <laughs> like he's just amazing like he could he could make even go into the kitchen and make a sandwich amazing. what if he talks like that like that's his voice like i'm oh. pretty sure he does and like he's amazing <laughs> for it like it'd be so cool he could he could make he could make even the, the phone book sound cool oh man <laughs> but yeah we're gonna we're gonna extend the tomb raider giveaway an extra week okay again yeah. <clears throat> keep sending us your questions and then we'll choose a winner next uh, episode hopefully Hopefully we get some really good questions. Yeah, send us questions, guys. Send us feedback, like we were saying before. Keep them brief. Um, send us one question. Uh, we love all the email emails that we've gotten, but you know, just and for God's sakes, person. please put your exact address, including your zip code, including yeah. your your apartment number, including you know your name and your state and your country. Yeah, we've gotten a few emails <laughs> and people have forgotten to leave just those tiny little bit of. Uh, bits of information so definitely leave those, leave those in there if you guys want you know the figurine yeah exactly like we got we had one person say hey i want the figurine but no address <laughs> it's, like, it's like come on man <laughs> how do i basic instructions <laughs> i know you like tomb raider but damn yeah but either way that's pretty cool and again send us all your your questions your listener mail ideas and stuff and even tell us how awesome we are or how much we suck it's okay yeah, yeah and, and let us know regardless <laughs> 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 But speaking of people who did get it right the first time around, you know, some people who got some uh, new uh, listener feedback here. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one comes from Ali Al Sahi. I hope I pronounced it right. Okay, he's from bra. He's from Bahrain. 
Okay? He goes, I started listening to the third episode of the podcast. I've listened to the previous ones for sure, as I need more podcasts next to Beyond and Unlocked to listen on my trip to work every day. That's awesome. We're already being compared to some of the best podcasts. (laughs) We're up there. We're up there with Beyond. We're hanging out with Greg Miller, Colin Moriarty, you know, all those dudes. Mm -hmm. We're over there having a party. But he goes on to say, and I would like to know if it's possible to get the feed on my Android podcast app because I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. As a gift, I have an extra code for Retro City Rampage DX on Steam, and it would be cool if you could give it away to a listener to Very enjoy. Very nice. Very Pretty very awesome. Thoughtful. Now, I'm going to read off the code, guys. Okay, so if you get if you actually get the code and you redeem the game, let us know, again, either at allstarpod at hotmail.com. Send us or, a Twitter or, or a tweet. Or a tweet. Or a tweet at allstarpod on Twitter. The code is for Retro City Rampage DX on Steam. It's GD3AP6. T D K six B Y V B N. I'm gonna read that one more time. That's G D three A P six T D K six B Y V B N. There you go. You so if you got it. Are gonna be re- you know rewinding the. Uh, <laughs> the oh, of course, they want to re-listen. They they want that Retro City Rampage. Get yeah. those Steve achievements. I want to okay? see pictures, it's... guys. If you get this, send, send us a picture like of a tweet and say, yeah, I got it or something. Put it put in the subject line. It's about that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that way we know. Right. But, um, yeah, so anyway, we also got some other questions. Thank you, Ollie. Okay, but here's another question, okay? This one comes from Zach Burroughs, okay? So here's my question for you guys. If you could take any franchise and turn it into a video game, what would you choose? I would love to hear what you guys talk about, what franchise you would choose, what genre you want the game to be, and which developer you would like to create. Mm. Okay, and then he said, which is a happy Christmas, he says that it's 2 a.m. over there. He's late night gaming. We're doing Christmas, that's pretty awesome. But, I don't know, Peter, which, which game, or which franchise would you like to turn to a video game? Who would you have develop it? Oh, geez, I, I don't even know how I would answer that, to be honest. I was going to make you go first. <laughs> Well, listen, it's very open ended. Like, I mean, you could if it could be any franchise. <clears throat> I swear to God, I would love another Star Wars related game, either done by Telltale or done in the same way that like thirteen thirteen was going to be done, like that Uncharted style. That's interesting. Yeah, something amazing because we got our Battlefronts, which is amazing. Which we're going to get another one, yeah. hopefully next year. That'd be pretty sweet from EA. We got a whole bunch of other Star Wars related genres and stuff. But if it had to be something that wasn't made into a game right now. Man, that's a tough one. Like, oof. I don't know. I, 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 like I said, honestly, I don't even know how I would answer that. Maybe like I don't know if you guys watch the show, uh, The Nick. The Nick. <laughs> that's like the first thing that popped up. So why not a surgeon simulator with, um, you know, uh, the usage of <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> people. Oh, who, people who've seen the show um, will get what I'm talking about. But I, honestly, I don't even know how to answer that. I want another Battletoads game, if that helps, or another Double well, Dragons game. I don't care who makes it. But yeah, those are games, though. Like, if you, if you want to talk about some random that's like franchise or like a series or something like that, imagine a cool, like, story based game for House of Cards. How awesome, just to get, you know, more of your Kevin Spacey fix. That's yeah, pretty sweet. So, uh, Make it like The West Wing meets, like, The Walking Dead. It'd be pretty sweet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> whatever works i mean it's a, it's very hard to say though because again it could be pretty much anything yeah. like mm. but yeah bro but thanks for your question zach okay it's pretty awesome Thank so you, let's go over to mr caleb now over here okay caleb goes when i was six our parents got my brother uh was and i you know little grammar check here lps1 it was our first gaming console it also came out Kim with about 10 games. Crash 2, Cool Board Games 3, and Star Wars Masters of Tali Kasaki. Oh my god. I feel for you. <laughs> you might want to look that one up. No! I mean, for both of you that know, that was the that was the Tekken-like fighting game for Star Wars characters. It was pretty bad. Oh, jeez. Okay, where are the games I played the most? I'm 19 now, and my dad thinks I play too much video games. Either way, I could thank him for starting my interest in video games. Yeah, oh, that's pretty awesome. A little Christmas yeah, give, memory there. Give, give your dad a nice hug and a cuddle from us. It'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. I okay. mean, we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for, you know, these particular moments in our lives you know receiving a video game for the first time or someone significant buying us a video game you know um, 
Yeah, it's a nice little memory shared. Thank you, Caleb. I mean, what was what was the spark for you that kind of started it? Like, you know, real quickly, like, what, like if you can remember the first game you played or, like, the first thing that made you want to play a video game. Mm, just like I said in the last post- podcast, just receiving my NES, getting it, and just playing it religiously. And other people mm. thought, like, you know, I was hooked on video games. They had it right, but, you know, that just receiving that as a gift, that changed my life. <laughs> yeah, but... That's true. I mean, for me, again, it was the first Sonic the Hedgehog, just randomly. That, again, it was on the Genesis, and ironically so. But, like, what was the thing that made you want to keep playing video games? I think um, that's a more interesting question. I don't know. Maybe just my addictive personality and just mixing that with video games. I don't I don't really have a reason. I just – that's just what I grew up with. It's been a large consistency in my life <laughs> for the longest time, so I don't want to let it go. I don't really have a reason. I just – you're addicted to it, and it. I took it. <laughs> <laughs> took it and ran with the ball. Yeah, pretty much. Now he's a gamer. And he's playing all kinds. He's playing that PlayStation Four, that Wii U, mm-hmm. and such. He's playing all kinds of good games. What about you? Same. Just uh, for me, I, I it, you know, just the fun times with friends. You know, just it, you know, seeing all the cool, neat stuff that come out of video games. Like I never really got into video games per you know at the start for stories. Mm-hmm. I think that's how a lot of people were. It was all about gameplay. It was all about you know skill high scores, you know, just beating up your friends in Street Fighter. That's really what it was all about, especially for me and starting off. But now as I've kind of grown older, like I love my narratives and games. I love like, you know, again, playing with friends and parties and stuff like that. Smash Brothers, again, perfect example that's more contemporary. But that's that's why I just love it. And then plus I just love talking about it with other people. Talking about games and discussing the industry and discussing different aspects about what's so cool about video games or what's so bad about video games. Mm-hmm. That That's really what does it for me. Per se. But Thank you for all the listener questions here, guys. You know, again, you could always send us more. Send us more of your feedback at allstarpod at hotmail.com. Okay? You send it to us on Twitter at allstarpod on Twitter. And again, also hit us up individually, both at uh, Pete, both mine and Pete's uh, Twitter's accounts. I'm at VenomousFatman1 again, Pete. Mm-hmm. And mine's uh, Pete underscore Lopez with a zero. So yeah, that, that wrap, this is going to wrap up episode four. I'm like, how are you doing so far? You liking the podcast good? We're classy? I'm loving the podcast. We're keeping it classy, just like San Diego. <laughs> yeah, damn right. Keeping it classy like San Diego. Man. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather, I'd rather choose LA. LA is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, LA. It's too hectic LA. over there. You thought San Francisco was bad if you ever been there? <laughs> yeah, uh, San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco, I've never been. But uh, Los Angeles I've been and San Diego I've been because okay. I went to San Diego Comic Con. That, that was my jam. Back in the day. But yeah, we're looking pretty good. But again, thanks, guys. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode here of the IGN All-Star Community Podcast. We'll be back again next week with some more cool stuff, hopefully, and hopefully we'll choose a winner for our giveaway. Yeah, hopefully get, we do. <laughs> yeah, we, we get a, we get a good, uh, good question one up. But thanks again, guys. We will talk to you guys again real soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. Peace. Peace.